too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th- see, now it's become so pedestrian to do Christopher Walken. Um, there are, if you just type into a Google search, Christopher Walken impersonation, sometimes over a hundred thousand search answers will Jeez. come up. Not, not kidding. There are five pages You've on done YouTube. That. On YouTube, dedicated to Asians doing Christopher Walken, <laughs> and they're hilarious. <laughs> now, I, and this is uh, worthless, am number one on that Google search. Go oh, ahead. Oh, hey. Yeah, Go ahead. And type awesome. right. Somebody oh, have a computer next awesome. I got it. Oh, yeah. I got it. I'm Modern era and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, by the way, that listing as the number one on the search, along with $7, <laughs> will get me a coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> That's how worthless it is. But yeah, coffee is uh, worth it. Yeah. You, you no, know, but I'm pitching in seven bucks. Um, <laughs> so there it know, is. Yeah. yeah, there he is. When I when I oh, when I walk around the house, you're gonna hold it up for the, for everyone to see. I am. I am. I mean, everyone technically has a device in their pocket <laughs> or hand that they do, <laughs> right, could, they could do. And it by for the way, themselves. I per, yeah. I perpetuate my number one listing by telling people to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you click on it. Yeah. Now, yeah, it's like, let's see if I can get it. this idiot to do that. Yeah, yeah, it works <laughs> every time. Every time. Now, it's actually not true because I'm not asking you to Google Kevin Pollack, Christopher Walken. That would be cheating. I'm just telling you to to type in Christopher Walken. I mean, don't don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't. That's right. So uh, when I think as Christopher, yeah, all of my thoughts are very abstract, as you would imagine him thinking. Um, I'll, I'll start my day the way anyone else does in the morning. I'll open the refrigerator and then it'll just happen. Oh my, we're out of soy milk. <laughs> Ooh, this is tragic news <laughs> for the lactose intolerant. I wasn't planning on a trip to the market today, but clearly a drive to Trader Joe's is in my future. <laughs> but is it? But it also depends on, but like a sentence like that is the, like if we said it in our own voices, it's not funny. But the fact that you, you know, yes. that you say it with that accent, the way Christopher Walken would say it, it, and because it's normally not a funny sentence, makes it funnier yeah. that you're saying that. So well, that that yeah, that is the. Um, I would think that's actually harder than doing the impression, coming up with the right thing to say as that person. It normally is, but in the case of Christopher Walken, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Just about okay. anything. Right. He can say anything, in the, but just um, the more, almost as if what I just said is perfect uh, uh, example, the more banal as Christopher Walken, the more interesting, because right. I want to imagine him saying something right. meaningless, mm-hmm. not something meaningful. Right. Yeah. Marsupials are fast. <laughs> <laughs> They're crazy. They, they dot. That's wrong. <laughs> no. That's uh, great. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. The, the, I, it took me probably 25 years to realize that doing impersonations is a, is a parlor trick. In that, if I can think of someone you like and I can recreate them in front of you, I will steal the affection you have for the actual right. person. Right, right. Yeah, which is pretty, which is deeper than a puppet, you know. <laughs> Not to take anything away from the great puppet <laughs> puppetry, from yeah. puppet puppets, shape. puppeteers, yeah. puppetry in general, and puppetry of the penis. Uh, <laughs> you know, not to undermine any of those geniuses. I'm just saying. Is that your I latest learned, thing you got going on? Well, well I brought sure, up the puppet. What, what man d- doesn't at some point make it talk? <laughs> Um, <laughs> but how do you? But then yeah. to take it a little further, then when you do your Peter Falk, I mean, you got how, how'd you get the eye to move? I mean, that's impossible. Another one you opened up for me. That was a. <laughs> I'm a safe cracker. That's what. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> he 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 asked me that actually. Yeah. Uh, standing in front of the produce section at the grocery store in Los Angeles. <laughs> how do you do that with your eye? Me, I understand, but. How do you do that? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I had done the Tonight Show, which is what he saw me doing. The Tonight Show. Um, I, I sort of orchestrated my first appearance, uh, knowing, taking full advantage of the premise I just laid out about this parlor trick of impersonations, 
and I knew that Johnny Carson loved Peter Falk. He didn't oh, just okay. like him. He had him on the show all the time, and he loved him. Mm -hmm. So I knew if the first question that I, you know, you arrange at the, at the pre-meeting you have with the segment producer, where you basically run your bits by them. But because I was on the couch, the segment producer was, what do you want Johnny to ask you? You know, there's a pre-interview. Right, and that's huge in itself just to be on the couch. That was a big deal for comedians with Johnny back then. Well, so there's the crazy part, truly crazy. When I say orchestrated, I, I had met the gatekeeper, Jim McCauley of The Tonight Show, whose job it was to find new stand-ups in the 80s and 90s. And um, I had met him backstage when I was a friend of another comedian who was on the show. Uh, you know, I would go with Jerry Seinfeld, Paul Reiser, Gary Shandling. Sure. Wow. You know, whenever guys would go to the Tonight Show to, to do their stand-up back then, you know, they'd bring a couple of spritzers, you know, and then just sort of run the bits and j or just to loosen them up and keep them loose and out of their own heads. Uh, so I'd met him under those auspices. So when I saw him one night at the Improv passing by, hey, Jim, uh, hey, Kevin, I said, uh, hey, who are you here to see tonight? He said, actually, the guy I was here to see, I just saw uh, canceled. And I looked at the list and I saw your name. So I thought I'd stick around because I think you're ready to do The Tonight Show. Now, nice. Cool. I'd been watching The Tonight Show since I was preteen. Right. I collected stand-up comedians the way my friends collected baseball cards. I knew all their stats. And, you know, so when I spent my entire life watching The Tonight Show and then waiting for this exact moment. Right. When someone in charge said, I think you're ready for The Tonight Show. Given all that the following poured out of my head, having never thought these words in this order before. And I said, well, Jim, um, thank you. I, I've been waiting since I was 10 for this moment, so let's get that out of the way. Um, having said that, uh, I think I'll have a greater impact on the couch. And I know you can't bring me to the couch. I know the protocols of the show. But because I know when I do Peter Falk for Johnny, he's going to lose his mind. Um, sitting next to him, I I'm willing to wait till I have a TV show or a movie where you can justify just bringing me out to the couch as an actor. Wow. And he looked at me like I was an alien. Wow. Well, I was in my 20s. I was pretty stupid. So I I <laughs> he looked at me like I was an alien for maybe 30 seconds, which is a very long time of silence. And then he said, well, do you have a TV show or a movie coming out anytime soon? What I didn't have the wherewithal to tell him was that I didn't even have an agent to go on auditions <laughs> yeah. for TV shows or movies. I just knew The Tonight Show, and I knew if I sat next to Johnny and did Peter Falk, I'd be a made man in that moment. Right. right. Um, so Macaulay says, well, listen, uh, you know, I, said, I answered his question saying, no, I don't have a TV show or a movie coming out. He said, okay, well, look, this isn't bad news for us because I believe you're just going to get better, so... Why don't we just keep in contact and when you get a movie or a TV show or <laughs> you change your mind, let me know. And, uh, you know, we'll just we'll just we'll keep an eye on you sort of thing. Now, I didn't tell a soul that I had had this conversation with Jim because anybody in their right mind would have smacked looked you. me in the <laughs> eye and said really awful thing to my face. Uh, I don't know what sort of language I'm. Uh, yeah. You're, you're allowed. It's governors. You're allowed. Oh, so then they'd look me in the eye and say, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Uh, you call Jim McCauley right now, you dumb shit. And you get this, you know. Yeah. So I didn't tell anybody. And well, you were I, probably doing that enough to yourself, like every day, <laughs> wondering whether you did the right thing or not. Well, you know what? It's interesting that for the same reason, those words unrehearsed, unthought came out of me to Jim McCauley the very first time I was finally asked to do the show. There was a resolve in my head and heart that, yeah, sure, I could go on the show and I would do well enough. Um, but if I sat next to him and I did that, I'm telling I just knew in my bones. Yeah. Right. And I've been right about two things in my entire life. And this was one of them. So about 13 or so months later, uh, a, a movie I finally got was coming out called Willow. And um, Ron Howard directed, George Lucas produced. It was a studio movie. I knew it was enough to get me on. So I called Jim McCauley. He said, yep, this is it. And so we set the date. Nice. And um, I'd be 
worried that like Jim McCauley would be replaced and like you know I like that yeah, was right. the things Magic that I'd right. worry about you know well he he wouldn't until he died because he you know that that position was was not one that was up for discussion he had he had done too well delivering the goods to Johnny but Johnny was tough on him also so because of that McCauley made sure whoever he was circling which was the term they used to see if they were ready yet he would make sure they had two appearances in their stand-up ready not just one because macaulay had learned the hard way if he booked a comedian the comedian killed and johnny loved that comedian johnny would say to jim after the show i want that comedian back in a couple of weeks wow. oh, yeah. so okay. wow. Makes macaulay sense. had wow. to make sure you had two sets in you um wow. so i i uh, yeah and when we got to the that pre-interview Macaulay said, uh, all right, so you want to set up the Peter Falk? I said, just just have him say, I understand you do, or I heard one of his horrible segues. Now, somebody told me, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. That you do impersonations. Is that right? And then I'll just launch into it. I'll catch him off guard. Don't put Peter, Peter Falk on the blue card. Just put down, I understand. It's got to be a surprise. Right. So the night finally comes. I'm standing behind the curtain. Macaulay's the guy standing there waiting to pull back the curtain for me to walk through. I'm hearing Doc and the band play, which I've seen a million times. I'm rehearsed in my head how I'm going to walk out. I've decided I'm not going to wave to Doc. I don't know, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> wave to Doc your second time on. The audience doesn't think you know Doc. Don't fucking <laughs> Who do you think? You're not Burt Reynolds. Go sit down. <laughs> you wave and he's like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wave the second the time. You can bet your ass on that. I wasn't going to wave to you either. <laughs> right. So the, the band comes, you know, plays after the commercial. They finally stop. And I hear Johnny say, well, folks, welcome back. Uh, our next guest is uh, he's an actor. He's got a new movie out called Willow, directed by Ron Howard. And I understand he's a comedian. So we'll ask him about that. Please welcome Kevin Pollack. Come out of the curtain. I don't wave to Doc. I get the, <laughs> the fuck over to the couch. And, and Doc uh, is mad. Yeah. And uh, Doc's pissed. Doc Doc plays you Doc's sad in the middle music. of a wave. <laughs> yeah, right. He's like, come in! <laughs> <laughs> this guy is first time on. Yeah. So the, the drummer's going, Doc, you're an idiot. This is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I get to the uh, over there, and the king, Johnny, you know, stands when, you, when the guest walks over at the throne, uh, you know, waiting for you. You pass in front of the desk, shake his hand, you sit to his right. And he sits down and he says, uh, welcome, Kevin. Now, we'll talk about Willow in just a second, this new movie uh, George Lucas produced. But uh, somebody told me you do impersonations. Is that right? And like, like predicted and arranged without hesitation, I crossed one eye and said, Johnny, that's a bold face lie. <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> and he lost his mind. He clutched his chest and pushed away from the desk. He was laughing so hard. That's so cool.